Hello and welcome back, I'm Statman Dave and today we're going to be looking at how to beat Liverpool with Coral. Make sure to subscribe if you're new and like that goddamn video. Anyway, let's get this party started. Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool have arguably been the best team on the planet over the last year, losing just four games in 2019 on their way to winning the European Cup. But are they invincible? No. Do they have weaknesses? Yes. Can you beat them? Absolutely. We're going to go through three key tactical principles you need to follow to beat Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Before we dive into tactics, when facing Liverpool, you have to go in with the right mentality. Without the correct mentality, you may as well give Klopp the points. Liverpool are one of the most aggressive and physical teams around. If you don't match their desire and physicality, you might as well get on the team bus and go home. You have to take the game to them, be aggressive off the ball and be bold on it. Red Bull captured a fantastic moment as Jesse March laid into his team at half time about the importance of having the right mentality when facing Liverpool. Are they strong? Yes, but it doesn't mean that we should be nice to them. Don't tackle them or fight. They have to feel us guys. They have to know we're here to compete. Not just that we're here to stylistically go and try and play the same way, but we came to f***ing play. Salzburg were 3-1 down at this point and they won the second half 2-1 as the game finished 4-3. But had they started the game like they played in the second half, Salzburg would have recorded their first ever victory over Liverpool. This team can be beat. Right, we've adjusted our mentality, we're ready to fight, we're going to match their work rate. But where are their weaknesses and how do we exploit them? Number one, we've got to congest the central area of the pitch, forcing Liverpool wide. We're going to be looking at two approaches in this section. Chris Wilder's Sheffield United's approach and Jesse Marsh's Salzburg, both holding similar key principles from two different formations. One of Liverpool's strengths as a side is how they progress the ball through the use of one-twos. A simple principle in football, but when it's done right, it's almost unplayable. This requires a high level of team cohesion, correct positional play and spacing, as well as a high technical ability. Liverpool have all four. Therefore, you must attempt to stop this. Otherwise, I'll end up opening you up with a combination of forward passes, layoffs and one-twos. Congesting the centre of the pitch will help deal with this. Not only does it allow your team to block off the forward passing lanes to allow for a one-two or a layoff, but you also gain a numerical superiority around the ball and you can look to win it back. Chris Wilder did this in a defensive 5-3-2-0 shape, with his strikers sitting off when Liverpool centre-backs were in possession of the ball, creating a wall of five players for them to play through. Not only is this dangerous to do because of the potential central counter-attack, but it's exceedingly difficult to find the right angle for the pass. March's Salzburg had a similar approach after they made their tactical change to a diamond on 29 minutes. A 4-1-3-2-0 with six players in the middle of the pitch, making it very difficult to play through them. Another part of this is that it stopped Firmino, picking up the ball in space. If you stop Firmino, he stops. Salah and Mane. You're basically cutting off the head, cutting their supply. So if your team is set up in a narrow shape congested in the middle of the pitch, is that enough? No, it's absolutely not. You need to disrupt Liverpool's possession game. This is tricky as you have to deal with Fabinho, Robertson, Alexander-Arnold. If you focus on the fullbacks, Fabinho takes control with his switches of play and his long passes over the top. If you focus on Fabinho, Trent and Robertson will run riot on the flanks. See Emery's approach in their 3-1 defeat. You need to deal with both threats, Fabinho and the fullbacks. Chris Wilder's 3-5-2 dealt with this threat by having John Fleck, the middle of their midfield three, pressing Fabinho if he wasn't blocked out by the strikers. To deal with the fullbacks, Wilder instructed his wingbacks to play aggressively and press the fullbacks when they receive possession. This was done in a pivoting manner. If the right wingback pressed, the left wingback would tuck in and create a back four and vice versa. Salzburg took a different approach. They had Minamino directly on Fabinho and they had one of their shuttlers pressing the fullbacks in an aggressive manner, with the rest of the diamond holding the central space. Due to the nature of this comeback shape, the shuttlers need to be very, very fast to close the fullbacks. Giving them space is a recipe for disaster. This is an area though where you can get joy. Robertson and especially Trent are suspect to pressure when building from the back and you can force them into inaccurate forward passes or what you want is intercepting a square pass with one of your forwards, thus creating a 2v2 counter-attacking situation. These pressing traps are perfect to counter Klopp's 4-3-3. Let's move on to number two, that is playing through Liverpool's press. A daunting task, yes, but as Jesse Marsh said, you have to play against Liverpool. In basic terms, how do you beat the press? You can play over it, you can play through it, you can play around it, or you can carry the ball right through the middle. 
These are all methods that you must use against Klopp's Liverpool to beat them. If you only use one, Klopp will adjust his tactics and you'll probably get beat. But if you can consistently beat the press, you can get Liverpool's weak underbelly and you will score goals. First up, let's talk about playing over it. This is a valid method. Mourinho did it with Lukaku for Manchester United's 2-1 win, with Rashford scoring both goals. His first, of course, highlighted this. Straight from a goal kick, De Gea kicks the ball long, Lukaku out jumps Lovren, Rashford touch, takes him wide, then he chops inside of Alexander-Arnold to finish. You can play over Liverpool's press and attack their back five. But also due to Liverpool's attacking shape, you can bypass them by hitting the channels, where it creates a better situation than playing directly over the top, usually exposing Liverpool centre-backs out wide. Now on to playing through. Tottenham Hotspur's second half performance at Anfield last season highlighted using a 3-2 base with a U in midfield. You can expose Liverpool's press, creating two diagonal passing lanes to the attacking midfield area, isolating Fabinho at the base by himself, breaking Liverpool's press. Salzburg did something similar using diagonal passes to carve through the press. This was created by manipulation of their diamond using a combination of movements to open up the lane to play through. The key to this was the central midfielders pulling Liverpool's shuttlers either wide or inside and then using diagonal passes to break the lines with one or two passes. And finally carrying through. You can beat Liverpool's press with a dribble, but you have to pick the right moment. Trying to dribble out each time when you receive possession is a recipe for disaster. But picking the right moment to carry the ball can expose them. Having a dynamic, nimble attacker in the team that's happy to do the hard yards in a defensive sense, as well as beating the counter press in the transition is kryptonite for Liverpool as he can catch them with their fullbacks high and their centre backs exposed. A pressing structure is the best method of defensive football at the moment, but if you beat the press, the defence is exposed. The final key principle that you need in beating Liverpool is playing to strikers. You have to be bold in attack when facing Liverpool. Since the start of last season in the league and Champions League, Liverpool have conceded two or more goals nine times. In seven of those games, Liverpool have faced a front two. This is important in defence, attack, and in the transition. In the defence they have a dual role, firstly disrupting Liverpool from building out of the back from goal kicks. You've got to have two strikers to do this to be able to go man to man with Liverpool's centre backs. You must also cover Liverpool's three man midfield and leave the full backs as out balls. The trap is now set. The idea is to use the touch line to narrow the pitch and press that side. This is exactly what happened in Huang's goal at Anfield. It's Liverpool's goal kick. Salzburg are set up for the trap. Adrian clips a pass out to Trent. Instantly, Mwipu reacts and applies the pressure to Trent. This forces the right back to pass inside to Henderson. Salzburg smell blood. Ulmer applies pressure from the front, and Mwipu from the back. Ulmer blocks the nutmeg, the ball breaks to Mwipu, and Daka clears out the space. Huang is now free in between the centre backs. He pulls Van Dijk wide, sends him for a hot dog, and fires home. The importance of having two strikers in this move should not be overlooked. Their positioning blocks off the central passing lanes and can provide direct pressure to the centre backs. But also, if the ball is won, they instantly have a 2v2 and they can use their movement to open up Liverpool. Dakar's decoy run opens up the space for Huang to have a 1v1 with Van Dijk and score. Secondly, if Liverpool's possession moves to the middle third, the two strikers become the first line that needs to be broken. This also sets up a pressing trap for Fabinho. Obviously, you need to commit a midfielder to execute this but winning the ball off a bad touch could lead to a 3v2 situation. On the flip side, if you only play one forward in defence, simply there isn't that first line to break and Fabinho will take control of the game. In an attacking sense, we've touched on it before. Liverpool have struggled against front twos, conceding 2.5 goals per game in the Champions League this season. The area that you need to attack Liverpool is in the channels, between the centre-backs and full-backs. If you get into these spaces, Liverpool are vulnerable. Salzburg's first goal at Anfield was scored in the channels and the next two were created there. Minamino's goal highlighted how you should attack Liverpool with two forwards when they when you get in behind the fullbacks. One pulls out wide into the channel, the other becomes a decoy runner. The wide forward will coax Fabinho slightly wider. The decoy will be used to clear up the centre backs, and this will leave a massive space for a midfield runner to arrive at the back post. In a narrower position, crossing from channel to channel is a very valid option. Playing from behind Robertson to behind Trent or vice versa, as seen in Haaland's goal. You wouldn't be able to catch Liverpool in these positions with only one forward. In a transitional sense, you need your forwards to be in good counter attacking positions to give them passing options to either break Liverpool's counter press or exploit this. Base vacated by Liverpool's fullbacks. 
This means they both need to defend the side that Liverpool are attacking, not only to congest that area of the pitch, but also be available for the break. Liverpool play with such a high line that a ball over the top is on in the counter-pressing phase. With the right pass, you're 1v1 with Liverpool's keeper. But if you combine all three of these key principles, you can cut through Liverpool, as highlighted by Salzburg's third goal. Liverpool are attacking down the left, but Salzburg's narrow shape forces Liverpool to switch the flanks through the centre-backs. Pressure is applied out wide to Liverpool's fullbacks in a diamond to force an error. Salzburg win the ball, carry through the pressure before playing diagonals to break the lines, and they find a pass in the channel for one of the strikers to assist the other striker in the other channel. A perfect goal to score against Liverpool. So to conclude, you can beat Liverpool if you force them wide into pressing traps. You stop Trent Alexander-Arnold, Andy Robertson and Fabinho. You have to play through their press either by going over the top using a dribble or a passing move. And you need to play two strikers to stop the build-up, attack the channels and of course to counter-attack. But anyway guys, what do you think? How would you beat Liverpool? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?